I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. Help will come your way this season. I decree the release of help from heaven. Help from the earth. Help from the north. Help from the east, south, and west will locate you wherever you are watching me right now. In the name of Jesus, by the ministry of help, you will be settled. Help will beautify you. Help will relocate and reposition you. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. Thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast today. I appreciate you, appreciate your time. Thank you. You are blessed in Jesus' name. And I want to appreciate you for all your mails, the emails, all your calls and encouragement as well as comments. And some of you that are praying for us, thank you so much. We value you and we appreciate you. It is my desire that this broadcast will continue to be a channel of blessing to you impact you, empower you, and lift you up in the precious name of Jesus. Now, Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Now, listen to me. Everyone created by God has a place on the earth. There is a place for you in God's program. There is a place for you on the earth. There is a place you are designed to occupy. And that's why Jesus said, occupy till I come. So there is a place for you, and this place is a place of glory. It's a place of honor. It's a place of elevation. It's a place of mighty manifestation. It's not a place of failure for you. It's a place of success. Now, however, you cannot step into your place until you are empowered. Because when you miss your place, you will be misplaced. When you miss your place in life, you will be misplaced. So in order not to be misplaced, we need to be empowered because you can't take your place on the earth without empowerment. To be empowered means to be enabled, to receive the support necessary, to receive the energy, insight, wisdom necessary to show forth in your place of manifestation. Yeah, I mean, the degree of your advancement is a function of the level of your empowerment. The degree of your advancement in life is traceable to the level of your empowerment. The more empowered you are, the more in command you become, and the more results you command in life. Now, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says concerning a woman that unto the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Why? that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. Revelation 12, 14. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into her place. So there is a place for her. Now what is going to happen in her place where she shall be nourished for a time and times and have a time from the face of the serpent. Now, two wings of a great eagle talks about empowerment. She received divine enablement to fly to a place in life so that she can connect with what has been prepared for her in a place. I prophesy as you watch this broadcast, the empowerment necessary for you to get to your high place in life may God release to you right now. The wisdom you need, opportunities you need, ideas you need, insight you need, understanding you need, even the knowledge you need, as well as the people, connections and relationships that you need to get to your place of glory. May God bring them your way by this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Power to rule your world. Power to change circumstances. Power to occupy your place. Power not to be misplaced in life. May God release to you today in the precious name of Jesus. By the power of God and the empowerment coming your way today, we subdue every other power that is holding you in captivity in the precious name of Jesus. Glory, glory be to God. Now, call somebody right now. Call a friend. 
gather the family together, get them together, get them on this broadcast, tell them the station you are watching me right now, because it is time to be empowered. It is time to receive divine enablement from God's word that will position you to rule your world in life. Now, if you have not requested for your free prayer message, for the pre prayer message I've been giving out, when I'm currently giving out free of charge, a prayer message entitled Prophetic Daily Prayer. It's a prayer message that is loaded with revelation, prophetic flows of prayer, right from the beginning to the end, on, on, on how you can maximize the benefits of the day, how you can connect with favor, all around favor on, on daily basis, how you can subdue the, the evil and the attacks on daily basis. You know, the Bible says that sufficient for each day is the evil. So this prayer message is packaged to pray the way out for you on daily basis. I have testimony from people telling me, you know, every day on their way to work, even when they are coming back, this is what they listen to. It has been a blessing to them. And I want it to be a blessing to you as well. So calling right now, a uh, request for a, key, a free copy is going to be mailed to you absolutely free of charge. No matter where you are in the world, call in, receive the prophetic daily prayer CD. And it's a full audio prayer message. Or uh, you can go to the website also, uh, wordrevival.org, and you, can, you will see a request a button there where you can place a request for the CD. It's going to be mailed to you, and you will be surely blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, right before I go into today's teaching, I, I want to invite you to the Empowerment Center. I want you to come around. Let us together worship our Father in heaven. Wherever you are, I want you to come to the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a, a non-denominational, life-transforming, multicultural church of God where we come together as a family of God to be empowered. Our assignment is to serve as a platform for empowering destinies towards fulfilling the assignment that God has for them. We are sent to bring you from where you are into where God wants you to be by the word of the Lord. We are a word-based church, fully connected to revelation in the, in the word of God and committed to prayer. You shall be greatly blessed as you come. Join us in any of our services on Sundays. We meet 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And on Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Empowerment Center. The address is scrolling on the screen right now. Uh, 838 Secretary Drive, Allenton, Texas, 76014. Come, let us connect with pray, grace on the altar of prayer as you shall surely be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Now, in case you are just tuning in, this is a moment of empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. A moment of empowerment is a revelational broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Now, today I shall continue my teaching series that uh, I started in the last broadcast on be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, in the last broadcast, we were able to discover that Jesus told Darius in Mark chapter 5, from verse 35 downward, that he should not be afraid, rather he should believe, because fear has torment. When you are afraid, you lose out of your triumph in life. So Jesus said to him, you don't need to be afraid. All you need is to believe. Because if you will believe, things can change. And the same word Jesus is sending to you as you watch me today, that no matter the situation, be not afraid. Only believe. What does it mean to believe? To have a firm conviction. To be fully persuaded that something good will happen. To have a full assurance, a trust, a firm persuasion within in your heart that you can't fail, that you can't fall. To have a strong persuasion that God's word will surely be fulfilled. To have a strong persuasion that negativity will not happen. That is what it means to believe. So Jesus had to tell him that don't allow what you are hearing to block you from where you are going to. That is why he said, do not be afraid, only believe. Now, we also discovered in our last broadcast through Revelation that certain things led to this instruction. Number thing, one we saw, we saw that there was a situation that 
His, his daughter, his little daughter, was at the point of death. We also saw that there was a, he, he ran for solution by going to Jesus. And I did say, and for those that are watching me for the first time, I want you to understand that don't allow situation to make you keep your mouth quiet. You need to cry out for solution. However, go to the right place. Go to the right person. Go to Jesus. That is the author and the finisher of our faith. So Jairus ran to Jesus, and we also saw that he connected attention. Jesus gave him divine attention. And the attention of God is what subdues the tension of life. When he, when, when he got there, the Bible says, he fell at his feet. That was where we stopped. He fell at his feet. And when he fell at the feet of Jesus, he caught the attention of Jesus. And I did say, to fall at the feet of Jesus means to surrender to him, to humble yourself, to worship him, to, to, to acknowledge him as God. Now, uh, in case you miss that broadcast, you can watch it on demand on this station, or you can go to the website, worldrevival.org, and you will find an Empowerment TV link there. You can watch the broadcast from there. Now, let's continue as we look at some of the reasons why Jesus had to tell him to believe and what other thing led to that statement. Now, after Jesus followed him, on their way going, something happened in verse 35 and verse 36. Mark chapter 5, look at what the Bible says. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Now, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. Now, even though he has gotten attention, I saw in the scripture that there was a distraction. Mm -hmm. There was a distraction. Jesus was following him to his house to go and heal the daughter, and suddenly the Bible says Satan came from his house. The same place Jesus was going to, some people came from there to tell the man, your daughter has died. That was a distraction. That was to distract him from connecting with what Jesus has to offer him. That was to distract him from his original intention of going to Jesus to come and raise him up. Because the man already said that, and you will raise him up. So he, what, what the man was saying is this, that no, 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 once Jesus comes, these circumstances must change. He believed Jesus so much, that was why he went for him. Now, on his way going home, there was a distraction. Why Jesus was still speaking, talking about the woman with the issue of blood. Some people came from his house to come and tell him that the daughter has died. That was a distraction to distract him from following through into where Jesus wanted him to get to. That was why Jesus said, no, 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 be not afraid. Don't, this, when, when Jesus heard what they have said, he knew that was a voice of distraction. To distract the man from following through, from receiving what heaven has for him. Be not afraid, only believe. is actually an utterance of encouragement. It is to persuade him not to give in for distraction, but rather to hold on to solution until it shows up for him. Whatever can distract you can destroy you. Don't let anything distract you from serving the Lord. Don't let anything distract you from holding on to the word of God. Don't let anything distract you from connecting with God wherever he has planted you. Many people have been distracted through the waves of life, what they have had, what people said to them, what men said to them. He had distracted them from their faith and they have shipwrecked their faith. I break the stronghold of distraction in your life today. You will not be distracted in the precious name of Jesus. And that distraction, Jesus knew what to do. Jesus knew that if I'm going to help this man not to face distraction, I need to give him an instruction. Then Jesus said to him, Mr. Man, Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. That was the fifth thing that happened. So that was what led to the instruction, be not afraid, because there was a distraction. Something was about distracting him from focusing, from taking what God has for him. And Jesus said, no, 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 what you need is an instruction. Because the instructions you are willing to follow influences your position in the program of God. The instructions you are willing to follow influences uh, your position in enjoying the provision of God. Jesus said, be not afraid. That was an instruction. Only believe, because when you believe,
things can change. When you believe, distraction can be subdued. When you believe, solution can come. Now, let me share with you certain reasons why Jesus said to him, not to be afraid, but only to believe. I'm going to be sharing with you five insights from Scripture. Why Jesus said to him, only believe. And that is the same thing he's saying to you right now. You could have received a letter. You might have gotten a report that it said your, your, your liver is breaking down. You, you, have, you have cancer. They might have told you your son is going to the prison. Even a judgment might have been placed on you. Jesus is saying the same thing to you. They might have told you your daughter, your son is dead. Your marriage is dead. That means nothing good can come out of it again. They even told him don't disturb the master again. Maybe you have gotten to that point in your journey that they are telling you there is nothing we can do. We are sorry. I have a word for you. Jesus has sent me to you to tell you do not be afraid only believe if you will believe things will change why did Jesus tell him to believe number one number one reason why Jesus told this virus to believe is because what you don't believe you are not permitted to receive what you don't believe you are not permitted to receive it takes your believing it to command the receiving it if you don't believe it you can't receive it that was why Jesus told him, only believe. How did I know? In Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24, the Bible says, For verily I say unto you, Jesus speaking here, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, so doubt is in the earth, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So if you will believe that what you say will come to pass, then you will have it. But if you don't believe, then you can't have it. In verse 24, Jesus continued. He said, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If you don't believe, you can't receive and you can't have them. It is until you believe that you can receive it, then you can have it. So until you believe it, you cannot receive it. So Jesus had to tell him, only believe. Because it is only when you believe that you will receive. I pray for you today, whatever you're supposed to have received, that doubt has taken away from you. We are doubt, fear, unbelief has hindered you. I break the hold over you right now. I uproot the seed of fear in you. I uproot the seed of unbelief and doubt in you. In the precious name of Jesus. So Jesus told him, believe. Because it is what you believe that you can receive. Number two, why did Jesus tell him to believe? Because believing is the key that unlocks the doors of all possibilities. Believing is the key that unlocks the door of all round possibilities. God is a God of possibilities, but you only draw his power of possibility when you believe. If you don't believe, you can't connect with his possibilities. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things in plural, things are possible to them or to him that believe it. So it is only if you believe that you can enjoy all possibility. All things are possible to you that believes. All things in plural, all things including your thing, all things are possible. You just got to believe it. Have a firm persuasion that God cannot lie. Have a firm persuasion that this is what he wants for you. Have a firm persuasion without doubt. Doubting is a stealer. When you believe that what God says is coming to pass, you surely have it. Jesus said, if you will believe, all things are possible. So believing is what steps up and open up the doors of all possibility. Number three, why did Jesus tell him to believe? Because unbelief is a stumbling block to divine manifestation. Unbelief is a stumbling block to divine manifestation. Unbelief always shut down the door of supernatural intervention. When Jesus got to his town, he could not do much miracles because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. It shut down what they're supposed to receive. Number four, why did Jesus tell this man to believe? Because believing is a catalyst for provoking divine performances. Believing is a catalyst 
for provoking divine performances. When you believe, you commit God to perform. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45, Bible says, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of that which have been said to her of the Lord. God might have said something to you, but if you don't believe it, you cannot activate the performances. It is your belief in it that brings the performances to manifestation. And finally, why did Jesus tell this man to believe? Because believing empowers you to overcome. When you believe, you can overcome. When you believe, you can overcome. First John chapter 5 and verse 5, the Bible says, Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So God, Jesus, told him to believe because when you believe, you can overcome. When you believe, you can come over the circumstances. It might be tough, it might be difficult, but you, when you believe, it's going to be over. When you believe, the next thing in your life, the next level shows up. And that was why Jesus told him, to believe. Now, before I continue with this, I'm, I'm going to show you some other things because when he believed, what happened eventually? Now, I'm making this offer available that for any donation to the ministry uh, this season, I'm going to send you this uh, four pack CD series. It's actually entitled Discerning and Defeating Satanic Strategies. Now, why I'm offering this because the doubt and unbelief is one of or, uh, are some of the strategies that the devil engages to block our destiny from receiving what God has for us. So call in right now to if you want to uh, uh, make any donation, any donation of any amount, I'm going to send this four-pack CD series to you. It's four-pack CD audio series. I'm going to send it to you for any donation to the ministry this month. You can go to the website www.wordreviver.org to actually uh, place or to make a donation. You can go, you'll find the donation button on the website there, and, or you can call the number on the screen and we will uh, attend to it and we will send it to you. It will be a blessing to you. It will open your understanding to some of the strategies of the devil and empower you to defeat the strategy so that you can overcome in life. Glory, glory be to God. Now, when Jesus told him to believe and he believed, something happened. The next thing that happened was a divine manifestation. It was a divine manifestation. When he refused to be discouraged, when Darius refused to be distracted because of the news of what he has had, he experienced the manifestation of God's power. His daughter came back to life. The Bible says, and Jesus went to his house, verse 38 to 42. Even against what they have told him, even against the news that he has heard, Jesus followed him to his house. When he got there, there were people crying, weeping, wailing, and, and mourning. But that was not why Jesus came there. May I tell you something? Whenever Jesus comes into your situation, things must change. Something must go out. Something must come in. When Jesus got to his house, the Bible says, what is this? Why are you making much ado? Why are we weeping? The damsel is not dead but sleeping. You see, the perception of Jesus is different from the perception of man. Man said he's dead. Jesus said, no, 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 I know better. He's only sleeping because it is when he's sleeping, she's sleeping. I can bring him back. I can bring her back. She's only sleeping. All that is required is for her to wake up. But because man is short-sighted, but God can see beyond man. Don't allow the news you have heard to make you think it is over. Follow what God has said. Follow what Jesus is saying. Follow the word of God to the letter. Believe the report of the Lord, because he knows better than men. Now, when Jesus got to the house in verse 40, they laughed him to scorn. They were laughing. Hear yeah, me? Those that are laughing at you will come to laugh with you. They thought it is not going to happen, but God is going to make it happen for you in the precious name of Jesus. And Jesus put all of them outside. You need to learn how to put distractions outside. There are some people you don't need in your journey any longer. There are some people you have to serve them eviction notice. Those that feed you with negativity. Places you go that you are always being fed with fear, unbelief and doubt. Separate yourself from there. Separate yourself. Jesus sent all of them out. And he took the father and the mother. And when they came in, he saw the damsel laying there. In verse 41, Jesus took her by the end and said unto her, Talita kumi. Talita kumi. That is meaning, 
damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And instantly, the Bible says in verse 42, straight away the damsel arose and she walked. She was of age 12 years. Look at the devil. Devil is trying to dismantle the future of a 12 years old young lady, young daughter of Jairus. The enemy tampered with her destiny to strike her down. But Jesus brought her back to life. I don't know what they have tampered with in your family, in your life, in your child, in your marriage. Jesus is bringing solution right now. I uproot the arrow of the wicked, every hand of the enemy. I command them to be subdued. Jesus said, Talita Kumi, daughter, damsel, arise. And she arose instantly. I prophesy, dead bulls will rise again. Whatever is dead in your home, I command them to arise. Talita Kumi. Kumi, your business arise right now. Your health arise right now. Your destiny arise and shine. I command your ministry to arise. I speak into your life right now. Just as Jesus got to the house, there was a divine manifestation. In Whatever is dead in your body, your kidney, your bones, your liver, your joints. Now call it right now for prayer. I'm praying for you. I want to pray over the sick. I want to pray over the sick. I want to pray concerning situation. I sense a prayer unction flowing right now. When Jesus got there, the death left. When Jesus got there, death left. Something must leave your body right now. I rebuke that demon in your body. I cast them out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke diabetes in the name of Jesus. Rise up from the wheelchair right now. Come out from the bed of sickness. Rise up from that hospital bed. You are healed in Jesus' name. I command every chain to break right now. Talita Kumi, arise right now. Arise, begin to walk. I command that daughter, begin to walk right now. Step into your place of glory. Step into your manifestation in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. When Jesus got there, because he believed, there was a manifestation. If only you will believe, the future that was already blinking was brought back to life. The future that was already gone was brought back to life. There is a restoration taking place right now. Everything you have lost, you shall be fully restored. It will be restored back to you in the precious name of Jesus. I want you to understand. The same word Jesus said to the man, be not afraid. Only believe. Because it is what you believe that be to live. It is what you believe that be to live. Believe in God. Believe in his word. Believe in his prophet. And believe in who God has called you to be. You cannot fail. Jairus got a daughter back. You are getting yours back right now in the precious name of Jesus. I know you have been blessed by this teaching series. I look forward to hearing from you. Let me know how it has been a blessing to you. You can call the number on the screen. Uh, and, and I want to get a feedback for you. Let me see how it has been. A I know you have been blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. And you can join me at the Empowerment Center this Sunday for a wonderful encounter with God's power. It is well with you. Till I come your way, stay empowered and keep empowering the rest. God bless you. Amen.